for those who are constantly frustrated about the Astros being slandered by all of baseball for the great sign-stealing crisis that probably involved a lot of other teams, even though we don't have any hard evidence. We just have speculated conjecture and unsourced reporting that the Dodgers were doing it, the Yankees were doing it, the Red Sox were doing it. Baseball, of course, didn't look into it. We have a story that now, I think, proves that sign stealing doesn't necessarily give much of an edge. You know, it's one thing to know what pitch is coming. It's another thing to actually hit the pitch that's coming. How often have you guys seen a catcher set up for a high fastball with a two-strike count? It's something that happens regularly, especially with the power arms across baseball. They're going to blow you away with a high fastball. If you know what's coming... Yeah, you could try to swing high, but generally a high fastball is very difficult to come around on, even if you know it's coming. There's an interesting story coming out of spring training. There was a game between the Minnesota Twins and the Tampa Bay Rays at Tropicana Field. This is the article from ESPN. Minnesota Twins right-hander Kenta Maeda, in his second start, after the return from Tommy John's surgery, was getting jobbed by his own pitch comm device that catcher Tony Walters was using. It was loud enough for Tampa Bay Ray hitters to hear every pitch that was called to the point that the plate umpire, Brennan Miller, made Maido aware of it, and Rocco Baldelli as well. Now, it helps that Tropicana Field had like 2,000 people in the stadium, 2,531 to be exact. The noise, though, that was projecting in catcher Tony Walter's ear of the pitch that was going to be called was loud enough for the hitter to hear it. And guess what happens? Maeda still threw two scoreless innings and struck out two along the way. I mean... They knew what pitches were coming, and they didn't hit them. So there are a lot of layers to the sign-stealing scandal that became really egg on the Astros' face and nobody else, where it's not just about sign-stealing. You've got to execute, too. And I don't think that whatever advantage the Astros even had with their elaborate sign ceiling scandal and the difference seems like between the Dodgers who may have had an iPad in center field with electronically relayed signals that would determine what pitch is coming and then some sort of verbal cue from the dugout. Uh, the, the difference <laughs> between those two situations really isn't as big of one as you would think, but you got to hit the pitches. Even if you know they're coming, I, I don't, think it's that easy to hit a ball fastball curveball sinker splitter screwball change up palm ball knuckle ball you still have to actually hit it easier said than done i mean that's why most of these guys are generally hitting in the mid 200s at best if not 200 or below or something like that and yet People acted like the Astros knowing what pitch was coming was this super advantage. I mean, it's a bit of an edge. I'm not going to be stupid here. But how much of an edge really was it? You still have to hit the actual ball itself. I'd go a little bit further, and I know a lot of you guys don't want to hear this from me, but I think with a lot of the sign-stealing scandals that we've seen in other sports, like with the New England Patriots and Spygate, Okay, you have a general idea maybe of a play that's coming. In real time, I think it would have been really difficult in the early 2000s to get a recording of something and send it to another part of the stadium because I'm assuming it's going to be recorded on VHS at that point in time. You'd actually have to have someone like 
run up to the coach's box from the field, I guess, to have these signs interpreted on the fly. It seems like it was a one game to another game thing, and coaches never changed their signs up. But you might have an idea of the play that's coming. You still have to stop it. You might have an idea of the pitch that's coming. You still have to stop it. There is an edge there in both of those situations. I just don't think it's a, as big of an edge as it was made out to be. People acted like the Astros had a cheat code. It, it was to an extent, but I just don't think it was as big of a deal. And I think that this story coming out of a spring training game between the Minnesota Twins and the uh, Tampa Bay Rays is proof that like it's not that big of an edge. You had Rays hitters literally hearing the pitches that were coming in catcher Troy Walter's ear. And it's not like they were just teeing off on Kenta Maeda. They weren't. They just, you know, had a routine inning. 713-780-3776 to call in, to text in as well. Mega Blast is going on a rant about how, like, the, the Patriots knew what was going into every single game. You know, you just don't know the story the way that I do. And also, you seem to be ignoring the fact that the Dallas Cowboys and Jimmy Johnson admitted to doing the same thing back in the 1990s, as did Mike Shanahan, when it comes to actually recording, you know, the sign stealing the big problem with the Patriots and Spygate was about where the cameras were located. They could have done this. They just couldn't put the cameras in this one area of the field and it turned into a big deal because much like with the Astros, people did not, I think, really want to go that far into it because they realized uh, it's probably not as big of a deal as it is being made out to be. And the further and further we go, the more and more other teams get implicated and the worse and worse our sport looks. So we just put this all to rest and we move on from it. But if you can't see similarities between the two scandals, like I don't know what to tell you. But the sign stealing that New England did was not as advantageous as people make it out to be. And much like the Astros sign stealing, I don't think it was as advantageous either. 